Hi everybody, this is Brooke Warner and you're watching Write with Brooke and today I'm going to do a brief tutorial on track changes. How to use track changes. In this case it's specifically Word 2011. That's my version here which you can see. Uh, but I'm also going to give a few little tips for how to use for version 2008 and under as well. So here we have a document. This is actually a Word document that I was working on yesterday. And at the current time, no track changes are turned on, meaning when I type, nothing comes up. In order to turn on track changes, I would go to Tools up here at the top, scroll down to Track Changes, hit highlight changes, and then make sure that all of these boxes are checked. It's very possible that you could end up here and none of these boxes would be checked or some of them would be checked, but you do want to make sure that all of them are checked and hit OK. So now, as soon as I start typing something, including delete, you'll see a strike through in blue, or if I were to add a new word, it would come up in also in blue in a new color and it shows my additions as the editor. Now in this case this is my own document and so the only real reason I would be using track changes is if I wanted to show someone changes. For instance I were working with an editor I had submitted something and maybe I wanted to make some additions or some changes. So this says on March 9th I participated in a round table discussion with Linda Joy Myers on I see a little note that needs to be added here, the topic of techniques to get unstuck. If you're, this is just a mistake, interested in hearing more, you can listen to the archive here. And maybe I would decide that I wanted to add another sentence. Thank you so much for listening, for instance. So that shows how to add changes and what it looks like what gets a little bit more interesting is once you decide to layer on top of someone else's edits. So I'm going to pull up a second document to show you what that would look like. Here I have a previously edited document and you can see that the editor's marks here are in red and now if I were to go in and overlay my own changes they would show up in a different color. Who are you and what do you want out of life? Uh, have you thought about a big change, <laughs> for instance. So now you can see that the original editor of this piece is red and mine is still in blue. Now Word assigns colors randomly so it's not that you're always going to be red or you're always going to be blue and it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you can differentiate between the original person who edited this document and your own changes. And if I disagreed with this, for instance, I don't like what she wrote here. When, the, when was the last time you conducted a complete assessment of your life? Let's just say hypothetically I disagreed with that and wanted to stay with did. I would just be able to go on here, highlight it, and delete it and insert back my own word, which I liked, did. So then you can see how, in this case, if you decided to delete what the editor did and put your own word in, it's a strike through so that the editor could see that you didn't agree with that change. Now the value of track changes is largely, like I mentioned, in an editorial relationship so that an editor can see what you've changed and what their original changes were. When I'm working with someone, I always ask that they keep track changes on and edit over my edits. But there's another way to go through and accept changes. In the case of a Word document, 2011 document, you go up here to this second tier here to review and hit the review button and go ahead and look at these various options here. You have accept, you have reject, previous, and next. And so when you hit the next button it takes you to the next edit and you can go ahead and hit accept just like this, accept all the edits. In this case, we'll go ahead and accept this so as not to confuse it, but let's say in this case you wanted it to remain uppercase, that you don't agree with the editor's change again, you would simply hit the reject button just like this. So 
this gives you the option when you're working with something that comes back from your editor to make choices about what you want to accept and reject. And if you just want to highlight the, the next track change that you see, you can simply move through and highlight them by either hitting next or previous just like this. So again, like I said, the value of this is immense. Lots of editors at this point in time only work in track changes. I pretty much only do unless it's a request. Um, and another thing that I want to show you, I'm going to go back to my original document here to the newsletter document. Uh, if you go to tools and then you go to track changes, highlight changes, if you go to options, you will see here that uh, right in this area that you have the ability to use balloons to display changes or to turn that function off. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I do want to look at it as balloons instead and hit OK and hit OK again. Um, let's see. Normally, <laughs> what would have happened when I did that is that balloons would show up in the corner here and your changes, rather than being inline edits, for instance, um, hello there, uh, rather than showing up here, it would show up in a balloon. I'm not exactly sure what is going on here, why it's not showing that. Um, but for those of you who do see that you have balloons and you don't want them anymore, you can turn them off simply by going on here and checking that. And then you can also make some choices here around the markup. Here in comments, you always want to make sure that this is by author. So if for some reason you're working in track changes and you see a single color from both authors, like for instance, mine is in blue and the editor's was in red. If that's not showing up, oftentimes you can rectify it by coming here and making sure that the by author button is clicked so that it's not all coming in in the same color. We'll go ahead and hit OK. OK. And the other thing, last thing here that I want to share is the original document that I was working on before I turned in track change, changes should have been saved as newsletter.doc, which it was. But at this point, as soon as I've made some changes to it, uh, I recommend this for everyone, that you resave it as a new version. So I would go to Save As and then call it Newsletter Still because that's the name of the document. But I would hit underscore BW2. And what this means is that now I know it's my original newsletter, but it means that my own initials, Brooke Warner and number two, so that if I were to send it to my editor, and in this case, let's say my aunt editor is Annie Tucker, one of my trusted editors, then she might change this to AT3, meaning that she was the last person to look at it uh, and that it's the third version we're looking at. And then you save it to your desktop, save, and that way you can have multiple files that you're working on, but you always know what the last file was. So that is today's lesson in track changes. I hope that you benefit from the little one on 101, one on one here, but we will be looking at some deeper kinds of things in future episodes. So thanks so much for listening in today.